Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew Clark, and in today's video, I wanted to take some time to talk about how you can link your chords together using lead lines or single notes. Now, there are a whole bunch of different ways to go about doing this, and it's all gonna depend on the way that you look at the fretboard, the chord shapes that you're most comfortable using, and the little bit of theory knowledge that you already have. But today, we're mostly gonna be focusing on one method for doing this, and it's mostly just based on the chord roadmaps that you've learned in previous videos of mine. So if you haven't seen that video of mine, yet, I'll make sure to link it down in the description so you can go check it out before proceeding with this lesson. So I've seen a lot of other people on YouTube teaching this, and what they'll do is they'll teach you a handful of licks that you kind of need to memorize, and then you can take those licks and use them in a specific part of a specific chord progression. The problem is this doesn't really give you much variety, and realistically, you don't want to be playing the same lick over the same change every single time over and over again. So what I want to do here is instead of just giving you a bunch of fish, I'd rather teach you how to fish. It's important to note as well that a lot of people that learn this concept learn it using the blues. And while the blues is great, it does kind of lock you into specific sounds and specific chord progressions. So what we're doing here pretty much works across every contemporary genre. Uh, it's more focused on pop chord progressions, rock chord progressions, country, worship music, uh, and things like that. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Okay, so we're gonna kick things off with the two chord roadmaps that you're probably already familiar with from my other videos. And basically all they are is we've got two of them. One is rooted on the low E string, one is rooted on the A string. And what that really means is the root note is the note that shares the name of the key. So if we're in the key of G major, the root note would be a G. If we're in the key of C major, the root note would be a C. This note is also commonly called the tonic of the key. So the first roadmap rooted on the low E string looks like this from the key of G major. We find our G note, which is right there. And then we've got our one, which is G, two, which is A, three, which is B, four, which is C, five, which is D, six, which is E, and then we've got our seven, which is an F sharp right up there. And then for our second chord roadmap, if we're in the key of C, rather than finding a C note up here and having to play way up the fretboard, instead we're gonna find it on the A string, and that is right here. So one right here is C, two is D, then three is up here at E, then we go all the way down onto the low E string for four, which is F, five, which is a G, six, which is an A, and then for seven up here, we've got a B. Now what that does is it covers the root notes of all of our diatonic chords inside of each key. Then with each of those root notes, we have a major, minor, or diminished chord that goes along with each one, and that kind of makes up our chord roadmaps. Like I said, if you're a little bit confused here, you can head into the description and check out that other video where I go into this stuff in a little bit more detail, but everything up until this point should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so for the next step, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a few more notes to our chord roadmaps. And since all of the notes inside the key are already covered. It's just repeats of notes that are already there, just kind of filling out the space so that we can kind of access everything. So I'm gonna go into the key of D major for this one, D major or B minor, same key. A string root chord roadmap, we start with our D note here. We've got D, E, F sharp. Then we go down here and we've got G, A, B, and C sharp. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a few other places where we can play some of these same notes just to fill out the space a little bit. So what that means is here's our D, and we can actually go back and put a seven right here, so a C sharp right here. We can go back, we can put a B here, so a six here. So same note, C sharp, right there. We're even gonna add another D right there. And then we're gonna go lower here, so we've got our four here. We can actually put our three, so our F sharp, we can put that down here. And then we can keep going up here as well. So as we've got one, two, three, we can even put a four up here. So this one here, same note, they're just different octaves, uh, but they are both G notes. And what this does is it essentially gives us a scale we can improvise with don't get scared of the word improvise, I promise it's super simple. But it gives us a bunch of notes that we can play around with in between our chords. And because all of these chords are diatonic to the key of D major, 
All of them, while they're not all gonna sound equally as good as one another, they're all gonna work. And instead of going chord, then release the chord and go up and play some licks and then go back down to a chord and then go up and play some licks at a new spot, which can be a little bit trickier to get the hang of, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these lower notes to kind of riff in between our chord changes. Now, if you don't have your chords super tight, if you're not super comfortable changing between, especially bar chord shapes, this is gonna be a little bit challenging. And I think in general, if you're not super confident with your chord changes, I wouldn't jump into playing stuff between your chord changes because ultimately this is kind of on top of the foundation of changing chords. Hitting the chords in the right spot is always gonna be more important and more effective and it's gonna serve the music better. So let's start off with a chord progression. Let's do a one, six, four, five in the key of D major. So that's a D major to a B minor to a G major to an A major. We're gonna do it nice and slow. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick some random notes between the changes. And I'm just gonna kinda of let my ear do its thing. There's no rules. As long as the notes are in the key, some are gonna sound better than others, but we're just gonna try it out. So it'll sound something like this. And the only real rule for doing something like this is when you're playing in a band, make sure that you come down when the rest of the band does the change. So wherever that lands, if it's on the one or if it's a push and it's early, whatever that is, just make sure you're hitting that. And then the rest of the time, you can kind of start fooling around and trying some other things. Your sense of rhythm here is incredibly important. So don't go too crazy with it. Focus on landing on those chords in the right spot. And when you feel like you've got a little space, you've got a little time, throw an extra note two notes, a little slide up or down, just using these notes from the roadmap. Now I know this is probably sounding a little bit simple, but this is the best place to start. If you wanna start playing some more impressive licks where you maybe start going on to the higher strings, this does lead to that. It's not like this is a thing that stands alone. There are a whole bunch of places you can go once you've got this foundation. And I am gonna get into that a little later in this video. But before we do that, we need to talk about the other roadmap, which is roadmap number one, which we're doing second, but it's the first roadmap which is rooted on the low E string because we can do something very similar. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find, G is a great key for this because you should be comfortable with it already. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we can fill that out again. We can go one, two, three, we can get a four here. Like that. We can get a three right here. We can even get a seven here. And that's an octave, right? The same note, just octaves of each other. Then we can carry on even higher if we want. We can go from six, seven. We can go all the way up to our one again. So an octave of our G. And then right here's our four. There's our five. And if you wanted to, you could even build that second roadmap again on top of this, link them together from the root note here on the G. We're not gonna do that today, but it would basically allow you to cover the whole fretboard uh, of all the notes in the key of G, which is pretty cool. And now we've got a good chunk of our fretboard available to us, depending on the chord we're playing, what's close by, everything should be comfortable. And we'll find a new chord progression in this key, and we're just gonna do the exact same thing we did with the first roadmap. So for a chord progression in this key, let's do a five, six, four, one in the key of G major. Uh, so that's D major, E minor, C major, and then down to a G major. And all we're gonna be doing is linking those chords together using the notes from our little extended roadmap, uh, and it should sound something like this.
now that you got both roadmaps figured out, you can really play in any key. All you have to do is shift the roadmaps up or down the fretboard so that that root note lines up with the key of the song. And then you're just choosing whichever roadmap feels the most comfortable for you for that key. So from here, really honestly, the rest is up to you. The point is to kind of start improvising, coming up with stuff on the fly, using the notes that you're allowed to play inside the key. Think about rhythm, think about where you're placing the notes, think about how many notes you're playing, are you repeating notes? Those are all things that you have the freedom to try out. And then once you get comfortable with that, you can start moving into some of the more advanced concepts. So if you're feeling like this is a a little bit challenging for you already, you can feel free to stop here. The stuff that we've covered so far is going to be a great foundation uh, for building this skill. And there's a whole bunch of, like I said, a whole bunch of different ways that you can go from here. Uh, but we are going to get into things now that are a little bit more noodly, uh, based more on vertical scale. So rather than being always horizontal, we can get a little more vertical. But like I said, if this already feels like enough, you can feel free to stop here. Okay, so for our next step, we are going to start getting into the higher strings. Uh, this can kind of become a little overwhelming quickly. Uh, so feel free to take this nice and slow, but I do have to give you a little bit of context and this probably should make sense to you already. But if we wanted to, we could actually take our roadmaps and extend them onto every single string all the way up and down the fretboard and basically just get all of our notes that naturally occur inside of a key. So if I was in the key of G major, I'd have all of my notes. And then to play in other keys, the intervals or the shapes themselves wouldn't change. I would just slide it up and down, just like the roadmaps already. Like I said, we're not going to get into all that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to start looking vertically. We're going to look at scales. Now there are a whole bunch of ways that we can approach this because there's scale shapes all over the fretboard and it just comes down to which scale shapes you are most comfortable with. But what I like to do is build myself a little bit of a home base around position one of the minor pentatonic scale. So to make this easy for you to visualize, what we're going to do is we're going to play this in a key that's very comfortable. So it's going to be the key of D major. What we're going to do is we're going to use our A string root note roadmap. We've got all of our notes like this. <laughs> Now, something you might not have noticed is we actually have our minor pentatonic scale right here for this key. So if I played So do you kind of see how they fit together? Basically what we're doing is we're taking our six chord, so that minor six chord in the key of D major, and the bar chord shape for that is gonna look like this, which is something you should be familiar with, just a minor bar chord shape. And if you look closely, you can see it kind of already outlines our minor pentatonic scale, which is right here. And all a pentatonic scale is, is it's just a major or minor scale with two notes removed. And those notes are the four and the seven of the key. So this note here, our seven, and this note here, our four, we leave those out of our pentatonic scale. But what you can actually do is you can actually add the four and the seven back into the pentatonic scale shape. And what happens is it just becomes a regular minor or major scale depending on the note you start on. So it's all the same notes that we've used from our chord roadmap. Instead, it's just laid out vertically. Uh, so we would be starting here on our six, but basically we get six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So you don't need to memorize the numbers here that go along with this shape. That's not what I'm trying to do here. This isn't a new roadmap like that. Basically what I'm just showing you though is that all of those notes that we've talked about horizontally also exist in this scale shape that's kind of easier to play because it's all in one spot. So you don't have to slide your hand around. Now what that does for us is that gives us the freedom to play any of those notes while we play a chord progression in that key. So always basing our scale shape off of that sixth chord, that minor chord. So whatever key we're in, wherever we move this, when we hit that sixth minor chord, we know. And you can even add those extra notes into this scale shape if you want as well and play around with those. The only thing is the pentatonic scale exists like that for a reason. The fourth and the seventh scale degree, uh, they tend to not always sound as good with certain chords. The rest of the remaining five pentatonic notes, they pretty much sound good over any chord in the key. So they're just like the safest of the safe notes, but play around with the other ones too. Like I said, there really aren't any rules here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna play a chord progression and we're gonna use our same 
same chord roadmap to kind of use those bass notes to move around, but now we also have access to this other vertical spot as well. Now this might mean you have to jump around a little bit, or maybe when you're down on your four chord, you're not gonna jump up here and riff and go back, depending on how quick you are at jumping up and down the fretboard. But I'm just gonna kind of show you again the type of thing that you can do. So let's grab another chord progression. Let's do a four, one, five, six. So in the key of D major, that gives us G major, D major, A major, and B minor. And all I'm gonna do is use the root notes from my chord roadmap, as well as my new minor pentatonic scale shape. I'm just gonna kind of combine them and just see what I come up with. Okay, so that should give you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with this stuff. Uh, if you wanna play in different keys, the whole thing stays the same. We just shift it up or down the fretboard. Uh, really, we're just scratching the surface with this one scale shape and then the chord roadmap. Uh, there's a whole bunch more you can do. Uh, obviously, there's other scale shapes over top of every other chord. If I'm playing the G down here in this key, that's a little unrealistic to jump all the way up here and play a pentatonic lick uh, with this other shape because it's so far away. And especially if the chords are moving quickly, uh, becomes really challenging. So what you would do is you would learn the shapes that kind of sit in that position, uh, which is just rearranging the exact same notes. It's just a new shape in a new spot. So if I was playing the G down here, I could play. And then when I go to the A, there's a shape there too. You kind of get the idea. There's all these other spots that you can play the same thing as, but I really just wanted to kind of scratch the surface and just kind of get you off on the right foot with looking at the fretboard this way and kind of thinking about licks in this way. And you might be thinking about the other chord roadmap because we did this based on the A string root note. Well, what if it was a G string root note? Well, this pentatonic scale shape fits in there as well. Let's say we're in the key of A major. So this is our roadmap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, the pentatonic scale shape, the exact same shape that can be used the same way, is just down here. So this is the one, right? If you remember back to the other shape, this was the one, this is the six, so we've got. And if we wanted to add those extra notes, And those would be all of our allowable notes inside of this key, which is A major or F sharp minor. Now, obviously this is gonna feel a little restrictive right now because you've only got that one shape, but as you get comfortable with it, you can kind of start extending that little home bass out. And then no matter what chord you're on, there's always gonna be kind of a shape nearby that's gonna be very comfortable to play. But you really do wanna start slow and really master this one shape first before you kind of break out into those other ones. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. I just kind of wanted to give you guys an intro into this whole concept of playing licks and single notes in between your chords. If you guys wanna keep going with this series and kind of extend into these new shapes and try some new ideas, please make sure you leave a comment below and let me know. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and please also consider subscribing to the channel as well. I release a new guitar video every single week. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.